Can you embrace your identity as an immigrant? That's what we're going to focus on today on Flourishment. Flourishment is part of the Spark Media Network and can be heard on the Edify app. I'm your host, Tina Yeager, and I have with me today a special guest. Her name is Mabel Ninen, and she's an author, speaker, seminary student, and podcaster who wants to inspire believers to embrace their identity as foreigners on earth so they can live with passion and purpose. Welcome, Mabel. I'm so glad that you're on Flourishment today. Hi, Dina. Thank you for having me. This is such a blessing and an honor. Tell us about your heart to help people really recognize their identity as foreigners here on this earth, because we all are together. We tend to look at our differences, but there are some similarities that are also very important to embrace and to to cherish. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I became passionate about this topic and this has become, you know, my calling and my message because of my story and because of my struggles and what I went through. I moved from India to America in 2008. And by the time I was already an adult and, you know, usually at a time when people are well settled in my late 20s, I must say. I thought it was going to be easy to relocate to another country and that to the USA. (laughs) You know, it's everyone's dream country. And I I saw it as such a privilege and a great opportunity to start a new phase of life with my new husband because I was newly married. But within a few weeks, I realized that it was not going to be easy uh, because I had left behind family community, my culture, and to start everything from scratch, I think put a lot of stress and burden on me. My self-esteem, my self-worth nosedived because I was doing a lot in India. I was being productive. I was working. I was involved in church and ministry. And here, you know, nobody knew who I was. I was like some obscure person. And to start all over again really made me feel like I was not valuable enough. So I had all these emotions going through me, struggling with also homesickness and loneliness. And being, I did not realize that being uprooted does that to someone. I, so I didn't come prepared to deal with all those things. And, um, you know, instead of going to God for answers, instead of taking my struggles to God, I was trying my best to do other things, volunteering in many places, or um, traveling with my husband, or, you know, just watching TV and being entertained. And, but I think after I became a mother, and that those feelings started to become more intense, and I started feeling more isolated, when I said, you know, finally, God, here I am with all my struggles of identity and trying to find acceptance and belonging with all the loneliness and all that mix of emotions and my and struggles I brought to God. And I just asked him to, you know, help me. Uh, literally, it was a very desperate cry. And I started uh, studying the Bible more, spending more time with him. And I think what helped me most was studying the Bible in community with other women too. And then slowly he changed my perspective that all these struggles that I was going through as an immigrant, this longing for rootedness and belonging and for something permanent. And let me go back here for a minute. So it was not just that we had moved from India and finally settled in one city. You know, we kept moving from city to city because of my husband's work. So in the more than 13 years that we've been here, this is probably my 10th or 11th home. (laughs) And so for me, and so you understand why that I I started to feel lost. And so I think God showed me that these feelings of this, these desires of wanting rootedness, wanting permanence, that security, it was a shadow of our longing for home because we are foreigners on earth because this is not our home and I started digging deeper into what this means what Paul meant when he said that our citizenship in heaven and what Peter meant when he said you know that we are 
aliens and strangers on earth. And he says that three times in first Peter. And so when I started digging into these truths, I realized that this is not home and that nothing here can actually make us feel at home truly, fully. And we cannot find joy and satisfaction and purpose in um, anything here because that's not what God created us for. He created us to have communion with him. He created us for heaven, even though we are meant to live on earth. And so that became my message that the way I embraced my immigrant identity gave me so much joy and purpose and satisfaction that I wanted others to to look at themselves as foreigners on earth so that they too can live with purpose and and joy and find satisfaction in life. So as we live here as foreigners on earth together, is community important, even though we don't feel quite at home sometimes? I think that's been a struggle the last few years to just experience community at all, or even the way that we used to. So we're all feeling a little bit disconnected and wondering how to get that sense of family again, a family of many different kinds of believers, perhaps. Mm -hmm. How do we get that? How do we really reach out and find that sense of community in the midst of being foreigners here on earth? Great question. Um, And, you know, that's a question that, you know, immigrants, I mean, now I'm talking about literal immigrants actually struggle with, and that's a lifelong search for them. Um, But we are so privileged, you know, as Christians that are, when we are saved by him, when we accept Jesus into our lives, when we become Christians, it's like we enter into God's family. He adopts us into his family. It's like a ready-made community that we become members of. And and that is a privilege to, to know that no matter where you are on earth, and this always brings me so much comfort because whenever we, you know, used to move from city to city, and sometimes I would just be so new to that city but then I go to church that Sunday morning and I feel connected to all the believers because we worship the same God even though I don't know them and sometimes it would just bring me to tears that you know that is uh, in a way home for me to be with other believers and to be worshiping the same God and so when we see ourselves as citizens of heaven foreigners on earth I think it helps us transcend all the differences that we do see that are, you know, visible and that are actually superficial. And we can find community by um, getting together with other believers. And when you see them also as, you see another Christian as a fellow sojourner, he's also a citizen of heaven. I think that kind of uh, fosters a sense of uh, brotherhood or community. And, Uh, Like I said before, it's such a blessing that we have to have these spiritual, like I said, spiritual siblings that God has given us. And I know this is hard for many people, this truth to accept that the body of believers is the best kind of community you can have because people have been hurt by the church um, and have given up on church in many ways. But um, I would encourage you know, um, the listeners not to give up on church because the body of Christ is God's design for community, is God's perfect design for community, meant to be a foreshadow of what is to come in heaven. And it's not just a local church. I think for me, the biggest takeaway from embracing my immigrant identity and going through the pandemic made me realize that we are also part of the global church. So, uh, and I connect regularly with Christians in India, I'm still in touch with, you know, my home church there. So when we um, were in the midst of the pandemic, I used to take some classes online for my church for the Sunday school or the VBS. And, you know, because they are my brothers and sisters. And at the same time, now we know what's going on in Ukraine. We pray for them and we stand by them. We stand with them. Uh, they are going through a lot. The church is going through uh, a crisis, but because they are family, they are brothers and sisters, and they are the citizens of the same 
kingdom, even though on earth, you know, we see them as citizens of Ukraine, but we are bonded by one spirit, one baptism, one God, one heavenly father. And so we can pray to the same God and help each other that way. And so even though they're far away, we still feel one with them. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful. And that's a great gift that God has given us. I love that praying for those people in the world that are connected to us as other children of the same father. And that's just a beautiful, sweet thing from your heart. I really appreciate that. And I love also what you've been saying about diversity in the kingdom of God. And diversity is something that is part of the ideal of America as the America idea the big, huge concept, freedom and and diversity. But I think the reason why we cherish those ideals of America as an idea is that these are things that we inherently crave about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is beautifully diverse and yet also unified as one brotherhood, one sisterhood, one family under the same father united by the same spirit, as you said, so beautifully. I love that so much. And I love that. And also freedom is something that we cherish about America as an idea. And yet real freedom comes from being part of the family of God. So there's this ideas of being an American that aren't always perfect as they play out really in America, (laughs) but in the kingdom of God, it's all so beautifully perfect in the kingdom of heaven. And we're trying to make that work in the community of believers on earth with brokenness of the earth interfering and the brokenness and flawedness of, of human people interfering. So sometimes, like you said, woundedness happens in the church and it doesn't always play out exactly the way it's supposed to, but that was true even among the disciples. Wouldn't you say that they were so diverse and they yet Jesus called them together to work together. They had zealots and tax collectors and fishermen and, and brawlers and, and all kinds of different people that just really wouldn't work together, but he brought them together anyway, and they were meant to go take this gospel forward. How would you say that's like us being foreigners on the earth meant to work together? And we need to overcome the things that would otherwise divide us and learn to be able to really cherish one another in the kingdom of God and work together and appreciate and be sensitive to what we should be doing for each other and with each other. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, I think I look at it this way. We've all been given a new identity in Christ, right? We are loved by God, chosen by him. We are a holy people, a holy priesthood, um, salt and light of the earth. But at the same time, he has given each of us unique gifts and strengths And so we fulfill that calling in unique ways. I mean, you know, you you do it as a writer, as an author, as a speaker, and someone else could do it through dance or worship or uh, some other way. Um, But we need each other and we are connected because God never calls us to work in an isolated way. He has designed us in such a way that We complement one another. And when we come together and work together is how you accomplish your individual calling and I accomplish mine. And together we contribute to God's kingdom purposes. And he is built in diversity for a reason, not just uh, race wise, but diversity in terms of, you know, uh, the different kinds of strengths is given each person, even placing us in different families and the way we've been raised is all different. Because I think if we were not diverse and if everyone was the same, where would the love be? <laughs> or How would we grow as individuals? How would we grow in faith? Uh, and so I think the diversity is intended for us to appreciate one another as God's image bearers. And um, to to make us learn who he is and what God's heart is. Um, And to also keep in mind that um, our brother and our sister might look different and think differently uh, and might come from another country, might be wearing different clothes altogether, but they are like Paul said, co-workers with us and that we have to see, okay, so how can I come alongside you? And how can you work with me? Because we are on the same road. 
we are going to the same destination. You know, we are headed towards heaven and we are going to all be together one day worshiping and serving God. So let's figure out how to do it now, because that's what we're going to be doing for eternity. Mm, that was so beautiful. I loved what you said about learning more about God by connecting with people who are different from us. I love that so much. I just want to highlight that. So nobody misses that beautiful nugget that you just shared and the way that we come alongside each other. That was magnificent. So when you find someone who's very different, instead of focusing on the challenges of those differences, we can instead look at them and say, how can I learn more about who God is by getting to know you better? Wow. Yeah. You put it so well that that's exactly, you know, what my heart is and I don't always do it well, but I remind myself that that is what I should be doing. And I, and we all need help from the Holy spirit to get there, but to keep striving for that goal um, is important. I love that. And let's take a quick moment to really highlight and feature your book during the month of July. Anyone who subscribes to the newsletter will be able to enter to win a copy of Mabel Ninen's book. Will you talk about your book for just a moment so they know what they have an opportunity to win? Yeah, it's called Far From Home, Discovering Your Identity as Foreigners on Earth. And I draw from my experience as an immigrant. I examine biblical characters who are also immigrants to um, highlight this truth that we can find purpose and joy when we see ourselves as foreigners on earth and citizens of heaven. Mm, that sounds like a fabulous book. I can't wait to see it and I can't wait to share it with all the listeners out there. So if you subscribe to the newsletter and I will definitely put the links in the chat for the newsletter subscription and for her book, if you just want to rush out and buy it, that way you can win a copy of this book. One lucky person is going to win. And I'm so excited about that. And I can't wait to share more. We're going to dive into what are some practical things that we can do differently to embrace our identity as foreigners and embrace others so that we can get to know God better by learning different aspects of who he is through meeting people who are different from us. I thought of three practical tips that we can do to embrace our or to see ourselves as foreigners on earth and to live out that identity. The first thing has to do with our heart. And that is to cultivate intimacy with Jesus, you know, to spend time with him, to sit at his feet to learn from him and to, to saturate ourselves with God's word so that our hearts uh, beat for Jesus, so that Jesus is enthroned and on our hearts and so that we want what God wants. Uh, and when our hearts are aligned like that, and then that takes us to the second step, we start imitating his perspective. And we know that um, Jesus had an eternal perspective. He was always looking forward. And that's why uh, he encouraged us in Matthew 6, you know, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, which means what we do here matters for eternity. It has eternal consequences. And so when we have that perspective, that eternal perspective, it can drive our actions here on earth. And I always, you know, compare this to the example of us go traveling and going to another country, maybe as a tourist. So we pack in a particular way. We have an agenda. We don't go there to, you know, build a house for ourselves. You know, recently when I went to Europe, I was there to explore the place. And so we dressed according, accordingly. I didn't take business suits and folders, you know, like I took to a writer's conference, but I would go with a different mindset because I know what I'm there for. And I think similarly, when you see yourself, when you see your time here on earth as a short journey with a purpose, which is to fulfill the great commission, to be Christ's ambassadors, to make people known through you, that kind of perspective, it can help you make choices. It can help determine your priorities in life. And so that eternal perspective uh, is something that's very important, I think. Third thing is has to do with hands, which is to live out your identity in collaboration with others. You're not called to do it on your own. And so find a community of believers locally 
or even and globally see how you can reach out to people either through prayer, uh, giving financially, or I would also encourage people to do this, that now in America, we are seeing that we have immigrants and refugees in almost every neighborhood. So how do you reach out to someone on your street who you know, you know, is, is different and who's probably from another country, but you've just stayed away, you're afraid, you don't know what to say, but go and, you know, have a conversation with them, take a dish or a something cupcakes and you know say hello and strike up a conversation and so so we don't have to go out and be missionaries right here god has given us a mission field to make christ known to people who are coming from different nations and so to recap you know the heart cultivate intimacy with jesus so that your heart beats for him so that uh, the things of the world lose their seductive powers over you and then imitate Jesus's eternal perspective. And the third thing is live out your identity in collaboration with others. Such wonderful tips. You know, you obviously have such a rich amount of insight to offer people and to draw people together in the name of Jesus. So I love your heart, Mabel. I think this is just a wonderful book and a wonderful message that you have to share. How can people stay connected with you and learn more about your message and more about all the beautiful things that you have to offer? Um, my website, which is MabelNinen.com, has a lot of resources um, and if you pre-order, um, there is a form on my website. If you just show me proof that you've pre-ordered the book or you've bought the book, um, you know, that will allow you access to a lot of digital resources and checklists. And I'm even doing recipe cards um, and you can sign up for my newsletter. And that's the best way because on the 1st and 15th of every month, I send out a newsletter and I just uh, try to encourage people with a devotion or point them to, you know, other books or podcasts. And so that's the best way to keep in touch with me. And I'm also on social media. And so it's, uh, I'd love for, um, you know, your audience to get in touch with me and uh, um, start a conversation with me. Tell us the name of your book one more time. So we don't miss it. Far From Home. Discovering Your Identity as Foreigners on Earth. Thank you so much, Mabel. I hope that all of you listening feel enriched by having spent a little bit of time with Mabel Ninen. I know that I do, and I can't wait to see more of what she has to offer. And of course, I also hope that you come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Flourishment is part of the Spark Media Network and can be found on the Edify app.